Hi, I'm Kathy Ann White. I'm here to tell you about a product by Engade called Transferees. And this is going to be a tutorial in learning how to use this product in a basic way and then taking it on your own. So first of all, we're going to have the Transferees Concentrate, which is a gloss, and it's an image transfer medium. This is going to be mixed one tablespoon to four ounces of a 91% alcohol. You can't use any other percentage of alcohol or that will not work. So I just want to be clear on that. I'm going to mix it all into a jar, a glass jar. And inside the video here, you'll have a little check sheet of what you're going to do and how to mix it and what we're going to do. Okay, so we're going to get some really, really cool uh, surfaces from all sorts of different things. And we'll use a brayer. We're going to use a foam brush. We're going to use one of these little foam things from a paint store. I just take it off the little roller thing. And then this, which is, um, it's a Catalast W-06. I'll have the information on this inside the video also in your resources so that you can uh, maybe get one of these. They're uh, sold at some art supply stores and then also from the manufacturer, I think. So we'll get into that. So I think pretty much that's about what we're going to need. And we're going to get a plethora of really great images on really cool surfaces. Now there are two ways to prepare your transfer or the image that you're going to transfer. One is to actually say, I'm going to print this image, just print this image. And then when you get to, um, doing your transfer, if you don't want it to be a solid line around or you want to take some of the transfer film a little away from the edge, you're going to have to do that manually. But if I wanted to do it here in my file, I would just go to my eraser tool and pick an eraser that you can see all these different erasers in here and they some of them are, you know, have more air between them and they're not totally solid like those. And you can use one of those and then just come in here and erase little parts of your image because then you have a jagged edge. So that's my little quick tip on that if that's what you want to do. And that'll be really easy for you to do before it's printed so it's ready to go. One more quick tip. If you are going to print this and you want this picture to be exactly like you see it, you are printing it on transfer film, so it'll be the reverse. So what you can do is you can go to edit and you can transform and you can flip the image horizontally and then it will print the correct way when you get it to the printer. And if you don't do that, then you can do it actually in the print box. You can go to your printer and you can open up your print box and when you get to let's see here right here okay in this little print box see it says flip horizontally now it's going to flip it horizontally so what you want to make sure you do if you care about how your image is going to be when you get it on your transfer transferred surface um, you want to flip it just a heads up Many of the porous fabrics work exactly like this canvas will work. So I'm going to show you, uh, we'll go through the canvas, and then we're going to um, look at what might be difference between this process and the other as I explain it to you. First of all, you can see that right here, my image does not have an edge around it. And I can show you when I, you know, I showed you on the computer how I erase it and this is a bit erased around, but this one I didn't do it to. So because I didn't, I am going to have to use a cloth and a little bit of water, and I will just rub out the edges, and then we'll get back to doing what we need to do. I gathered a couple things that I like to use with this. This is a really good tool for pushing this into the canvas itself and making and getting the print really nicely set. So this is where it'll end up being. 
One of the things I'm going to do now is I am going to tape this edge down like at the top and then we'll tape the other side too because we don't want it to open up. But first I want to see if the canvas here is going to stretch a bit. So my main thing is to get a lot of the transfer solution onto this canvas and I want it very saturated. I don't want to leave anything at all not saturated because if it's saturated then the print will not only let itself go from the surface it's on but it will um, it will be where I want it to be and float into the top of the image I mean the top of the fabric because you want it set you don't want it laying on top or I don't you know you might decide that that's great for you but for me what I like to see is I like to see the gradation or the the little weave of the fabric because I love the way that looks and that's just me so you'll figure out what works for you so see I can see that this is pretty saturated right now so just to make sure I'll make sure my edges were done well because I'm not actually really sure right now where this is going to go to the edge of. Hopefully I saturated it all. Then I'm going to just put a piece of tape down here and get this set. And I'm going to set my print, my image, towards the middle. I usually just hold the top of it. I don't set it, I don't tape it to keep it where it should be, but if you like to tape it, this is your process. You take what you need to know and then you move it from there for what's good for you. So I'm going to move this into the canvas just like this and then brayer it a bit and we'll be ready. I did tape the edges down so that I would be sure that as I lift this, the edges don't lift too and I just keep a little bit of pressure for my fingertips so I'm taking it all across the entire piece or as close as I can and then you have your image. Cheesecloth is another surface that I really do like to do transfers to and it you, you have to soak up the surface like you do in the canvas part. And then, I always tape the edges all the way around before I do a cheesecloth. Because it will stretch and it could get um, totally out of the box. So I pretty much try to keep it down. Um, cheesecloth and gauze and those types of things, your grains can be all weird so you have to be okay with that. You have to be okay like you can see maybe some some things in the fabric that aren't very um, they're not very straight. But it doesn't matter to me and I think it increases the look of the texture in it. So, but I will, even though this is going to get, this is going to stretch out a bit, the larger it is, the harder it is to keep it flat, but um, I still would like it to be taped all the way around so that when I put my image down, you know, I can keep it kind of where it is, sort of, because it can grow really bad. So anyway, I'm just going to saturate this and then we'll put the transfer on. So I lay my transfer on the top and smooth it out. No air underneath it. Then I will use this tool because I do want it to press way into the fabric. And the fabric is pretty saturated. Sometimes it comes out. The nice thing about the fabric is it helps keep the print, the image, where it needs to be instead of moving it around, which the metal can do. So it's a little bit easier to deal with. So we'll finish this and then time it. Bringing it off.
delicious texture in the cheesecloth. And now it's time to let it dry. These other types of fabrics are pretty much the same. You do the canvas and the cheesecloth where you tape around the edge so it stays firm. This is a reme, so it's very easy to get this nice and saturated and get a beautiful image on it with the image transfer. This is a piece of cheesecloth and we'll look at the other one eventually when it's dry. But this is a small one and you see how nice the texture is on that. The other thing you have is the crinkle papers. And this is a crinkle paper that was printed in, um, you know, just with the regular transfer image, but it was printed the same way where you get the surface very saturated so that you can use your brayer and this other tool here that I like to really get the image to go into all the cracks so it doesn't peel off on you. Okay, now here would be the uh, cheesecloth that we did. It's really nice, flexible. And if you can tell, there's definitely texture. Plus, now here's something, one other quick thing to think about. If, see now there's two different things I did here. This cheesecloth has a little teeny bit of sections missing because that's what happens. There's no um, fiber there. But for this one, I let it dry on the plastic sheet that it was on. And because I did that, it pulled more of them out. So if I would have taken it while it was still drying and put it on another sheet to dry, I wouldn't have engaged all those holes in my surface. But that's something that I really like to see. So that's just a little silly thing about drying it where you could see something else in the surface. And then um, this is that, that I didn't just show you in another clip, this is the, um, the crinkle paper, but the one in silver. So there is a really, really nice texture thing going on in here. And if you saturate your surface, then you can press the image into those little grooves. It might take some practice, and it might not. Just keep it wet. And then this is the, um, the canvas that we just did. And this is a canvas that I had done at another time. This is actually just a piece of plywood. Now you would want to treat wood like you would so it wouldn't warp or those types of things before you would do this if you have some ideas on what you do with that. Um, for me I'm just going to show you a wood really can take a nice image. Whoop. Taking this off. Rolling. And there's your piece of wood. Okay, let's talk about the mesh in the metal category. Here is an image transfer on top of copper. It's a copper mesh. Looks great. This is, okay, when, when I did this one, I will say that I put a coat of Ink Aid Clear Matte first and let it dry. Then I did the image transfer over it. For these other surfaces, these brass, I just used the image transfer solution and allowed the edges and everything to peel off. Now if you don't like that, then you really have to make sure you get this mesh as close to the plastic or whatever you're going to create it on and it not have it bow up in places because what happens is the solution will go through it and then it won't take the image off. Like you can see that little part there. I happen to like the edges that way. 
like messed up. Um, the other thing that you can do is you can make this happen on purpose. And then it's fine to have these little spaces in here if you want it. But if you want a really good print, then my advice is you would take um, this. This has clear mat on it. This had clear mat on it. And then you would put the image on top of here. So the first thing you're going to do is get your image and then we'll put some solution on and you'll see what I mean. Image ready? Solution. Use the transfer ease on this. Now this is not going to be pushed way down into the table. Um, I'm just going to put a really nice amount of the transferees and then we're going to see what's going to happen. I just turned this upside down but it really doesn't matter. And then we'll uh, use my tools, get this to stay, and we'll go from there. And let's take it off and see how we did. And there it is. So here we have a piece of a uh, beverage can. And I'm putting the transfer on top of it and measuring it. And then I'm going to put some surface, uh, I am putting some surface coating on top. Then I'm going to place the transfer on the top of the can. Now this is where you need to take a little bit of care because what happens is if you move this, you could see it move a little bit there. I, you know, uh, angled it away. You could see the top of it moving. You want to hold on to it tightly and make sure it doesn't get messed up before you do the brayer because it can move the ink underneath it. Now I'm going to take it off and see how good of a print I can get. Again, I'm trying to put equal pressure on the plastic as I'm pushing it and rolling it down so that everything will stay on the can surface. So it's looking pretty good so far. And we'll see what's going to happen by the end here. And now it's off. So now I'm going to go for a printing plate to do um, to do an image on. And the first thing I did was I rubbed, I just use a bit of, uh, this is like a, almost like a Brillo pad, and I just scuff it up a little bit. Then I wash it and I'm going to put the coating on it, the transferees. Now in metal you have to really be careful you don't smush this around once you put it on it because you can mess up the print inside as soon as the um, ink starts to release. If you move the transfer on top you can smear it underneath which is not a good thing. So I'm going to press this down and wait my time and then we'll take this off of here. So I'm ready to take this off and I lift it very carefully and then I just start to roll it down. And done. And you have a really nice printing plate piece. 
I do have another couple things to show you. One is a print that I did on brass. This is just a section of it. It's uh, I love the way the brass takes over different parts of the color and then other parts of the color get more vibrant with it. It's really a nice surface to print. Well, actually, to use a transfer on, but I do print that. That's a transfer. But I do want to talk to you about one thing about metal that can happen. And this is because I wasn't paying attention. Okay, you see these these things right here? Well, that's because when I press, to, instead of pressing lightly down like this, when I use the, uh, put my transfer on, I put my fingers on here. And as soon as my fingers went on there, they spread the ink that was it already getting loose. So you want to be careful to keep your fingers off. You'll see my hands on things, but it's not tightly on things. It might look like it is, but it's not. That is. So you want to be careful about things like that. The other thing is, sometimes when you roll it or you brayer it too hard, or you, you know, press it, you know, even with this type of thing, you can make the ink move and run away. So you want to think about that when you're working on metals. But metal is a beautiful surface to uh, use a transfer on. This is one of those surfaces. You don't want to put your fingers on top of it because it'll for totally make prints in the in the um, in the print. So I'm going to lay this like that. And then I'm going to use my foam roller and roll it down and keep it right where it is, hopefully. A little dangerous to move your foam roller when you're not holding on to the, unless you have it taped. I don't know why, I just don't usually do the tape. I have no idea why. So we'll check this out in a couple minutes and see what happens. And there's a small piece of copper. Leather is another interesting surface to use a transfer on. I'm not really crazy about it when it prints, but I kind of like it when I do it um, when I do it with a transfer. And when I'm done with this, I'll show you a couple other things. It does stretch quite a bit when you put the transfer fluid on it, and so I tape the ends, but later after this is ready to go because it's very. It's, you can see how it moves all, the, it's very kind of loose. And you also want to get this saturated. You can see how it's starting to soak in. Saturated pretty good before you go to put the transfer on it. And before I do, I'm going to tape it because it does come, well, I probably, now it's all wet on the bottom there, but it does come up a bit. And so I don't really want that to happen. And the worst part it comes up is when, I have to make sure I got the right side down, the correct side down, when it really comes up is when you're trying to pull it off, the leather likes to stick to it. So I will smooth this and I will use this and get it all pressed down to the fabric and then we'll pull it off. And there we have a nice, nice print on leather. Okay, these are pieces of leather that came from the same place. This is obviously the front side, this is the back side. I also like to print the opposite sides of the leather. You get a, in your, if you're using this type of skin, the lighter part obviously is gonna make a lighter print. 
but um, it's still, the back sides still can make an interesting image. And I said print again instead of transfer, sorry. But, um, but it's really a great surface to explore. So I have some plans for leather also, and we'll see how far this goes.